uh, Acts, Acts 2.31 in the NIV. You don't have to turn there, but seeing what was ahead, this spake he of the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave. So the KJV says he wasn't left in hell. The NIV says he wasn't abandoned to the grave. That's just talking about his physical body that was in the grave. And so you see how they're going back and they're changing things in a system to make you think that the angels are God's sons, to make you think that paradise is in the center of the earth, in hell, to make you think that hell is the grave, to make you not understand the fact that Jesus was, was you know, dead for three days and three nights. Now let me explain something to you real quick. Jesus said, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And believest thou this? The very definition of eternal life is life that never ends. A life that never will cease. You will never die. Jesus said, whosoever liveth and believeth me shall never die. So you, you see, my friend, I'm not going to die and then someday be resurrected. No, sir. My body will die. But my soul will live on for eternity. Only the flesh will die. Amen. But the inward man, the soul, the spirit, the moment that I die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. 2 Corinthians 5. Paul said, I have the desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. He didn't say I have a desire to go lay in the grave. He said I have a desire to be with Christ, which is far better. And so the believer never dies. Now let me ask you something. Where will the soul of the believer go on breathing its last breath? Where will you go when you breathe your last breath as a believer in Christ? Heaven. You'll be with God in heaven. You'll, you'll be uh, carried up to heaven. Now let me ask you something. While you're in heaven, will you be dead? No. You'll be alive. You'll be living in heaven. You won't be dead in heaven. You'll be living in heaven. You'll be living in what place? According to St. Corinthians 12, Paradise, because the Bible says that heaven is paradise, and that paradise is where the tree of life is, and that heaven is where the tree of life is. You'll be in heaven, and you'll be what? Alive or dead? Alive. But what was Jesus for three days and three nights? Dead. dead. Now, if Jesus were in paradise or heaven for those three days and three nights, that would mean that he weren't dead. Because nobody in paradise is dead. They're living in paradise. Hey, listen to me. You say, that's the New Testament. How about the Old Testament? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Amen. That's Old Testament. That's Jesus walking on this earth saying, when God spoke to Moses in the burning bush, he said, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. And he said, God is not the God of the dead. God is the God of the living. He said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. He said, before Abraham was, he said, look, Abraham saw Jesus Christ on this earth. Why? Because he's not laying in the grave dead somewhere. He's alive in heaven looking down upon Jesus Christ's earthly ministry and rejoicing, according to the Bible. So, there's no death there, but yet Jesus said in Revelation, I mean, he told us, we'll never die. Whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He said in Revelation chapter 1, I am he that was dead. He said, I'm the first and the last. I'm beginning. It. He said, I'm he that was dead. He said, I'm he that was dead and I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So Jesus, don't try to tell me that Jesus was not dead. Don't tell me that only his body was dead. Jesus truly died in every sense of the word. Because not only did his spirit, not only did his body die, but his soul went to hell. Okay, that's death. That's being, people that are in hell right now are referred to in the Bible as being dead. People who are in heaven are referred to as being alive. And so he was dead. He was in hell for three days and three nights. What happened three days later? He rose again from the dead. He came back to life. You see, that's the difference between the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of Lazarus. That's the difference between the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of the young boy that Elisha breathed into his nostrils and he came back to life. You see, those men did not go to hell. They were not dead and come back. Right? They were only sleeping, according to the Bible. Do you remember that? Remember the, the maiden that was in the coffin and Jesus came and said, Weep not, for the maid is not dead but sleepeth. And that's what it talks about we're going to be. We breathe all that breath. The body is sleeping. 
we're still conscious, alive, in heaven, in the soul, in the spirit. Okay? This is Bible doctrine. This is what the Bible teaches. And so it's very clear that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. But when he died, he gave up the ghost and he was in hell. You say, wait a minute. And turn back to Exodus 12. I've got to finish the sermon because I'm out of time. Look at Exodus 12. We'll finish this. You say, wait a minute. Jesus said it is finished on the cross. And people will say, see, he'd already done everything we needed for salvation when he said it is finished. So there's no way that he had to go to hell to suffer for our sins. He'd already paid it all. He said it is finished. Now hold on a second. Isn't the resurrection necessary for salvation? Yeah. Because I would say that the resurrection is the number one most preached part of the gospel in the book of Acts. I mean, it's what's emphasized. Hey, we are saved by his life. We are saved by his resurrection. 1 Peter 3.21 Jesus Christ's resurrection is the gospel. The dead, the burial, and the resurrection. Are you saying that Jesus didn't have to rise from the dead for us to be saved? Are you saying they didn't have to sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat in heaven? Those are things that were necessary as well. Right. And so when he said it is finished, he's saying his life is finished. His earthly ministry is finished. His work on this earth had been finished, but was everything that he would ever do finished? No. He's, he, he would go to hell and be in the heart of the earth for three days and three days. He would rise from the dead. He would show himself alive by many infallible proofs. The NIV says it was convincing evidence. The King James Bible says infallible proof, Acts 1.3. He would rise again. He would show himself to his disciples. He would show them the holes in his hand. He would say, put your finger in the hole in my hand. Thrust your hand into my side and be not faithless, but believe it. And one day he's coming again. And our salvation will not even be complete until the redemption of our body at the rapture. I mean, right now my soul and my spirit has been saved. My body has not yet been saved. One day at the rapture, our sanctification will be complete when we're raised a spiritual body and stand faultless before the throne. That is still coming one day. So it is finished. It's not referring to he did everything we needed for our salvation. Wrong. Because he still had to rise from the dead. He still had to sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. That does not hold water. But look at this now. We'll close with this. Exodus 12. We saw in verse uh, 6, And ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So far, Jesus fulfilled this. He was presented on the 10th day, Palm Sunday. He was then killed by the entire congregation on the 14th day. That's the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Then it says, in verse number 7, And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two posts on the upper door posts of the house, wherein they shall eat it. You know, you think about this, if you were to, you know, put a, a blood on the top and on the two sides, that would basically make a shape of a cross if you just connect the dots on that, okay? And that's a picture of Jesus Christ, you know, hanging on the cross. And Jesus said, I am the door, by the way. That's why he put the blood on the door. He said, I'm the door. If any man enter in by me, he shall be saved. But it says in verse number 8, And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Now watch verse 9. Why does God emphasize this? Eat not of it raw, nor sod it all with water. Don't eat it raw, don't boil it, but roast with fire, he said. The Passover had to be chosen, it had to be examined, it had to be killed, it had to be the blood sprinkled, the blood shed. Jesus Christ died and shed his blood. There's significance in the blood in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He had to shed his blood. He had to be roast with fire. And then he had to be eaten. And he said, eaten? Well, you must not have read John chapter 6. Because John chapter 6 clearly says, except he eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in him. He said, my flesh is meat indeed. He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. He that eateth me shall live by me. John chapter 6. Obviously, he's not talking about literal eating of his flesh. He said, it's not the flesh. He said, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I say unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He said, the flesh is the body that I'm going to give my life on the cross for many. He said, uh, of course, eat the book. It says in Revelation 10, book of Jeremiah, book of Ezekiel, they ate God's word. God's word was spoken. They ate it. Thy words were found and I did eat them. Jeremiah, Job, I was steamed the words of thy mouth more my necessary food. You see, Jesus Christ was chosen. He was examined. He was found faultless. 
Paul, Pilate said three times, I find no fault in him. He was then killed. His blood was shed. And he was roasted with fire. Let me tell you something. If you don't believe that Jesus went to hell, then why did hundreds of times in the Bible every single sacrifice mentioned? Why was it a burnt offering? What's the, what was the symbolism? Somebody said, well, that symbolized that Jesus gave it everything he had. You know what I mean? Like, he's totally consumed. Come on. He said, don't, don't boil it. Don't eat it raw. It must be roasted with fire. And look, if you, if you want to go ahead and believe this version, this, this new international version that calls Joseph Jesus' father in Luke 2 and 33, that tells you to beat yourself in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, then go ahead. But don't tell me that you're a King James Bible-believing Christian. And then tell me that you don't believe Jesus went to hell when Acts 2.31 says this spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell. The burnt offering, my friend. Mark. The book of Mark, uh, chapter 9. I'll turn there. You don't have to turn there. Mark chapter 9. For everyone shall be salted with fire and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Mark 9.49. Every sacrifice of the Old Testament was a burnt offering. The Passover was a burnt offering. The morning lamb of God sacrifice that pictured Jesus Christ, the lamb of God, the physical lamb, was a burnt offering. The sin offering was a burnt offering. The trespass offering was a burnt offering. Why all the fire? Because it was a picture that Jesus Christ would not only die on the cross physically, take a physical beating, physically be spat upon, but actually be punished for our sins by suffering the flames of hell, an eternal hell somehow condensed into three days and three nights by God's power and rise again having conquered 